Hey everybody, welcome to episode 31 of Tactical Crouch. I'm Kick Tripod, of course, joined by Volamel and Yiska. You guys are looking good and warmed up for the episode that we have today. Going head to head today, you two. Head to head. We're going to be doing a little, a little segment later on called PvP. We're going to put some knowledge and argument skills to the test. See who comes out victorious, so make sure to hang out for that. Before we do get started, of course, make sure to follow the show on Twitter at Tactical Crouch. Tweet us your questions and topics you'd like to have touched, uh, discussed on the show. And also post them if you ever watch the live show. Post them in the chat. Last week, we grabbed quite a few that we yeah, answered yeah, yeah. at the end of the show. So if we have time at the end of the show or if it's a really good question, we'll take time and answer those questions on the show. We do record live Tuesdays at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So, you know, make sure to come tune in and say hi. It's twitch.tv slash kick tripod. And then, of course, you can watch and listen to the show anywhere where you can listen to podcasts. Just search for Tactical Crouch. Let's get started with the news, shall we? Uh Surprising news. Uh, so first of all, did, I didn't even know the all-star voting thing was going on. Can I just say that? I didn't like all-stars, man. I, mm. I totally just like, I either just glazed over it, wasn't paying attention or whatever. Maybe they, you know, usually during breaks and things like that during the broadcast, I'm usually up and around and doing things. Yeah. So maybe that's when they're announcing it. But the all-star coaches and rosters have been announced. And not a single player from the Shock, Gladiators, Titans, or Spitfire made it on either All-Star team. And Pine from NYXL did make it on an Overwatch League team. On oh, them sick DPS. Yeah, the like, you know, because he's playing a ton of... Uh, he's play, Overwatch, play, yeah. Playing a ton he plays play, a lot of that, that game. Plays a lot right now. Um, so, unfortunately. Yeah, so you got like you've got Arc on support, you got Poco as tank, you've got three Chengdu hunters. Which okay, that I can more be okay with. It's I can not the sympathize worst. there's it, reasons. But... It's also like we like China actually has a like a, a decent representation in terms of actual talent from their region. And they're like, wow, cool. We have cool players. Let me vote for them. There hasn't really been a decent, for, uh, a decent Chinese player in the league. Now we have a, a, at least a fair amount of them. So of course they're going to get like a good nod, but uh, I, is this a growing pain? I don't know. I, I'm I'm at my wits end on on what to what to think about this. Is it is it just a fun thing? It, it, should there be something else that is just a fun thing and let all stars be the best players and the best coaches duke it out in some sort of like show match? Is there? Do we need extreme underwater Hammond six v six? I I don't know. I just get you're quiet on this one. I can't yeah. tell if you're about to explode or you just don't even care. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I don't care that much. I, I honestly think that <clears throat> the way this is structured, the only thing that's a little confusing is the name because it's like also suggests it's about stars now. When it's not, but uh, I mean, depending on your, um, yeah, if you uh, want to play yeah, semantics with it and what is a star, you know, is it um, is it like a character? Is it a fan favorite? Like, I suppose I, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, but the thing is, what it really highlights to me is people want to have something fun with their players. That's fine. I don't mind the format. Knock yourself out. Yeah, I know the best players also don't want to participate because it takes away from their practice, from their off time. They would rather do something else. But it highlights to me that there is not only desire in myself, but also in others, that they say, okay, this vote, there's something wrong here with this voting because we're not appreciating skill. And maybe we need something that does appreciate skill. So, for instance, it could be like an award thing, like yes, after holy. stage playoffs, just like, okay, the best six players on each role uh, of the stage, but it could be voted by 
analysts and could be voted on by um, staff with regulations, for instance, not voting for players you've formerly been with. Mm -hmm. And I would extend that, for instance, if like if I'm Kai Kai, I can't vote for Harry Hook, yeah. right? S stuff like this. So just that we keep a little bit of, um, you know, friendship out of that thing and like bias. So uh, as long as that's the case, I, I honestly don't think we, it's, it's a good idea to strain players with another event uh, that don't want to and want to top perform. So in that sense, I mean, knock yourself out, just have some fun at that event. I'm not sure if I will be watching, but that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't like people getting so hung up on the definition of All Star as like a justification yeah. for why this is bad. Like, get over it. It's just a marketing thing for me, though. It's just like, I, I. It's surprising. It just doesn't look like that fun of a game to watch. Like, I don't know what else mm. to say. It just like it doesn't look really that entertaining. Um, no, definitely, it's it's not content for people who genuinely like try to follow the league it's it's gonna be like something for you know the the fair weather person that comes in and that's fine like it, it, i understand like people have lives people can't dedicate uh, as much time as they would like to following their team or even following the league so maybe they do only follow one or two teams and they play overwatch casually on the side and they do want to see you know mayhem versus i don't know some sort of crazy lineup right like they, they want to see this crazy chaotic stuff which is fine it's not content for me but it's it's just uh, a nice litmus test to see where we're at in terms of like okay who do we think is popular Mm -hmm. These, if these are the people we think are popular, okay, we've done a disservice to you. We, you've been sold a false bill of goods. I don't think we've done a good job of explaining some of these stories and really crystallizing why some of these players are good and why they're they should be applauded. Um, I, I love Yiska's point and and adding extra awards like. I wrote an article about this in season one where NYXL made all of the stage finals. I'm like, that's something that should be awarded. I feel like that would be a really cool award. If you can win all four stages, you should get like a pin. You should get something that you can wear on your jersey. You should get an alteration to your jersey mandated by the league that shows that, hey, look, I've done this really cool thing, and now I can show you that I've done it. Yeah. I like it. I would I love to see. Sorry, go ahead. I, I will also say it acts as a sort of illustration that both in the game and in the reporting of the game or in the broadcasting of the game, something is going a little wrong when the best players aren't the most popular. Yeah. I think that is like even in, in sports, like Ronaldo and Messi are still the most uh, easily looked at players because of their legacy. Of course, it's a little harder to build that fa uh, fan base, but um also the big players that were like Joan is in i guess but uh, sure the, the... there is some recognition but then then there isn't then then mm -hmm. you have your, your profits then you have um is super in there at the moment mm, not sure no I, no, no I, there's I, no shot player yeah. Yeah. So like th there's a lot missing there. Of course, you're not going to be able to include every single best player. That's not what we're asking. Or at least that, that's not at least what I'm asking. I, I won't speak for the other the other hosts, but it's it's surprising. I don't care. Again, you do what you want. If you want you six V six tracer duels headshot only. That's cool. I'm not yeah. particularly fond of it. You do what you want. If that's something you're into. Cool. But it's 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 a strange litmus test to see this is where we're at. Maybe it's maybe it is a growing pain. Maybe after three or four years, we'll look back on this and, and remember the conversation fondly when we see that, you know, the the LeBron James of the Overwatch League is properly being applauded and the Kobe Bryant and the Michael Jordan and the Scottie Pippen, you know, all of these very, very generic white girl basketball players that I'm naming like it, <laughs> When, I didn't know you were we, a fan of basketball. Yeah. Oh, you know me. Um, <laughs> I I couldn't name you any. That, decent that was NBA it, right? It's basically yeah, it was just like, any any we're, NBA we're player that here. showed up in Space Jam or Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> yes. That's it. That's my uh, my my reach in terms of basketball. 
And but yeah, if if we can get to that point where those people are being adequately applauded and and they're being marketed well, I, I think we're in a good space. But when 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 Pine hasn't played a stage, and he's being voted in just by sheer force of like marketing arm, yeah. and by kind of accident, I think we've we've got a problem. XQC T-Mobile MVP, let's go. Uh, I think no, I think there is like some room for that kind of stuff. Like if you want to have is. like a streamer showdown where you get everybody from the Overwatch community to vote on, we're gonna bring in XQC and we're gonna bring in Aspen and and Defran and they're all gonna play against the Overwatch League teams and we're gonna bring in a celebrity. Cool, do that. That's awesome. But and maybe this is me being cynical. I wonder how much weight people actually put behind all stars. Are people using that as a resume point? Like, oh, I was on the World Cup. That doesn't mean jack to me. But for Joe Blow investor down the street, oh, you were on the all star team. Wow, that must be really important. Pine. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know. In the end, I mean, there there are aspects of it for like discoverability, like RE with the World Cup. Like a lot of players like you know, you could have yelled Gooseway for years before, you know, yeah. people would actually look at him because they saw him in the World Cup. So there is an aspect of that, but they're already in the Overwatch League. And it all stars doesn't feel bigger than no, no, Overwatch no. League. So I don't think that there's that aspect of it. In I don't know. We probably already spent too much time on this, but I would love to see changes because this does not look fun to watch for me, period. So yeah. I'm like, I'm That's more fine, interested man. in the, I'm more interested in watching, you know, Sideshow and Bren act the fool on yeah. DPS heroes than. Yeah. I'll probably watch the, 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 um, what, what do they call it? The talent showdown or whatever. Right. Like I'll probably watch that just for entertainment, but watching, you know, mystery heroes with my favorite Overwatch League players doesn't really entertain me. And that's fine. That's fine. It's not content for me. If people want that, that's cool. But again, it's just like this weird place that we're at. Let's talk about something that was pretty cool, though. Uh, so the San Francisco Shock did finally solidify the perfect, perfect stage. Yeah. So not only did they go 7-0 and in stage two, they went 7-0 and with 28 map wins and zero map losses. So a perfect, perfect stage. We're going to talk about, yeah, we're going to talk about the shocks overall uh, strength, I think probably later on, but this is a, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy stage for shock. I wouldn't say it was difficult. Like they didn't play, you know, they didn't play the Titans. I don't think. Whereas like, you know, they did twice kind of in stage one. Um, so like there was that aspect of it, but, uh, yeah, dream brings up, uh, a good point. It was also zero draws. So yep. mm-hmm. decisive. I, I I would say that it wasn't uh, it was difficult in terms of like being able to be spotless on map losses and draws because there are teams in there like we saw with Shanghai. A lot of people thought that Shanghai was going to be able to take a map and on Kings Row, it did look like they were going to take that map. Um, every match, it felt like you, they could give up a map here or there like Spark. Granted, it was in terms of them improving. They were kind of in that uh, system of, you know, kind of churning along, improving, finally getting their stuff together. Um, Maybe it is some sort of, you know, stage fright. Who knows? Um, Do I what was some interesting last night on Oversight? Monty had uh, postulated that he thought this wasn't going to happen again for a long time. And I don't know if, if I agree with that. I think that. It's not out of the realm of possibility that we do see this happen again. I think next season we're going to have some some very, very big talent being brought up and becoming of age. Um, and depending on where they land, depending on what the meta is, I think there's there's definitely reason to assume that this could happen again and could feasibly happen sometime within the next season, I, I guess. I, I think it's hard for me to see that. I, I, it depends on the structure. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say never, and I wouldn't say in a long time. The, I, I think the, we yeah. should leave that open. I think it definitely could happen. It's, it's hard, but the thing is, and what one has to consider, and that also really annoyed me when people talked about this, is so then strength of schedule is brought up. Sure. And it's like, okay, we have to add a, a caveat to this. They have weak teams. What do you mean caveat? It's a great achievement, blah, blah. 
Yeah, but they didn't have like a top four team in there. How is that not a caveat? Th this, like, if this happens again, of course, strengths of schedule should be compared. Why not? Of course, that is a caveat. I, I think it's a. F I I definitely understand where the problem is, but it, there are a lot of weak schedules. There are, you know, some decent teams. There are some, you know, we have the top three for a reason. Why aren't they doing this when they have easy schedules? Now, again, we're only halfway through the season, so we don't know. Um, could we have another immaculate stage in stage three? It's possible. There, there are going to be some schedule conflicts. Maybe there is an easy schedule that somebody can coast through. When that opportunity presents itself, will they do it? This is the same problem that I had when I would talk about, you know, on Winston's lab, if, if somebody had the best statistics, right? You know, Flutter has the best Widowmaker, you know, rating on, you know, again, which is a, a number kind of generated arbitrarily through their algorithms and whatnot. But people drew problems with it because it was against Shanghai. It's like, OK, that's that's you know, that's fair. But why isn't Pine doing this? He played against Shanghai. Why isn't Saya player doing it? Why, why aren't these other Widowmakers doing this against Shanghai? Why You all play Shanghai, so obviously you should be able to put up those exact same numbers, and they didn't. So that's, I, I, again, I, I, I understand where the, the asterisk comes in, but I'm also, how much weight do you want to give it? Yeah, it, is, it is a very powerful achievement, and it is something that we should applaud. Should we? Sure. I don't know. I, I really don't know how much weight to give it because, yeah, they, they did kind of have an easy schedule. But when it comes to the course of the season, how many easy, easy schedules are there? Why aren't the Vancouver Titans doing the same thing? To be fair, the, Vancouver only missed it by three maps. Like, yeah, exactly. Sure. 100 percent. They, they were trolling their pants 100 percent. And again, if they don't care, that's yeah. fine, too. But why Dude, is NXL doing that? Can I just say it's a big deal? Yeah. For a team to go twenty eight and zero, and any like sure strength of schedule. If a if another team goes twenty eight and zero, um, then yes, the debate will then be whose team you know who. What who, schedule is, was there harder? Isn't though. There isn't though. We're still talking about pay for perfect stages, as if perfect stage of Boston was equivalent to the one that we're seeing with a seven o teams now. These nuanced uh, discussions don't happen after the fact. Now we have this stamp of oh, perfect stage. But yeah, you uh, might Boston, have a, an so absolute joke of a Boston uh, schedule. Boston didn't. Boston lost maps. It's different. I think. No, it's, I, I mean, think he was looking at like the seven and zero. Oh, like every time we see a seven and zero, oh, we give them like the stamp of approval. This is different. I think this is completely separate. We haven't seen a team look as disciplined, look as clean as the Shock do. I'm willing to give them some ounce of credit. Yeah, it's 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 a feat no matter what. Like if a if a pitcher goes and play the best pitcher in the league goes against the worst team in the league and throws a perfect game, it's still, it's still a perfect, perfect game. game. It's still a perfect game and But it isn't though. That's my point. But it is. It's like, very very different than doing it against the best team in the league. Except that nobody's it, doing it against the best team in the league, so it doesn't become fine. a factor. That even if it's a mid-tier it's like, uh, team or whatever. It's like saying, "Oh yeah, the shock I, I, I had a perfect to... had a perfect uh, thing, but they didn't play the Titans seven times, so it's not really that big of a deal." Like, no, that's not that's not what we're talking about here. No, no, I, I'm not discrediting that. It is absolutely also something that is very, very much commendable. My point is that we memeify the, these labels of like perfect stage, like uh, golden stage. And then when, when it eventually does happen again, we sort of equalize them as we are doing now with perfect stages. Like this, it isn't post reflected upon with Boston, Boston's uh, importance. Uh, sorry, was it? Yeah, it was Boston, right? It wasn't about... Yeah, Boston, yeah. Boston had the 7-0 and stage in yeah. like stage three, I think. 10-0. and yeah. Was it 10-0? and Okay. Um... I don't know. Um, undefeated stages are definitely in uh, a more common occurrence. And, and again, uh, not to misrepresent your point, I, I, I agree. Like there does need I, I think there is a level of reflection that would be appreciated to go back and look at like, oh, well, you know, 
how important was this? Was this actually as important as we thought? How hard was their schedule? I, there's nothing to take away from them. But with with. Yeah, I don't know. So the other thing is, too, though, is with there only being. Seven matches per stage, I honestly usually expect a team to go six and one or seven and oh, right? It's it's not in we've had it in both stages now, right? Both stages have had a seven and O team. Right. This stage had two seven and O teams. We that it's not like, yes. Oh, cool. That's good. They did really good that stage. That's awesome. But it's not a, like a perfect, perfect stage. Mm -hmm. And I, that's what we're talking about here. And I think that's where the difference is. And like, that's why I would go and compare the Vancouver Titans stage one performance to uh, the Boston Uprising stage three in season one. I think yeah. stage three, right? Um, Something like that. I would go and compare that, no problem. But I wouldn't right now because now Vancouver's done it 14 times. Yeah. And it, that's absolutely a downfall of that system, which once again, I have to criticize. I understand that we have the, to the find some way system? to make Yeah, okay. Are you going to, is this another scheduling. like poo poo on the scheduling? I don't know. I'm, I'm like over the scheduling nonsense. I think these teams are completely to blame. I don't think the scheduling has much to do with it. I don't think you can. I don't think there's a schedule in the world that makes up four teams being worse than you expected. Yep. I, I honestly don't think that we'll see a perfect stage happen again with a team that had like a really tough schedule. It's like that's just not how those things work. Like it's just yeah. And even if it did, like that would like garner a lot more respect. I think generally, I think people would I don't be think it willing. Would. I mean, I think, I think like people will go down and go, it's kind of like LeBron and Jordan, right? Like you already sure. hold them in, you know, an insane amount of respect and you're just being like a bad person. If you're like, well, yeah, but uh, we need to nuance I this mean, thing for, to respect them both. You don't. I, I no, no, no. I, I think, I think generally people would be willing to respect them both. But I think if you pitch a perfect game versus the first seed in your division versus the last seed i think there's a little bit different there, there's some difference there in two years like, there is not. a little bit more respect in two years in you go and you just sure. see a line out on the column but i like i see him like i see you know what i'm Yiska's talking about point yeah in the sense I, of, I th and again i don't know if i'm translating it well but i think that's what he's trying to get but that's that's why like the the jordan lebron debate will always go on that's yeah, why you can't know yeah you just there there's so and there, many there are good points either way and it's, I, it's going to be some something that point. we're always, you know, there probably will come a day where we say, you know, in their best stages, what was the best team? And we'll talk about Boston Uprising stage three. We'll talk about NYXL sure, yeah. season one. We'll talk about Titans first half of st uh, season two so far. We'll talk about SF Shocks perfect, perfect stage. And we'll start comparing those. In fact, we should probably do that on a slow week show sometime you know like <laughs> we'll put that in the, in the shelf off of topics season that we we'll have. talk about you know like overwatch sure. league accolades or whatever and it's fun that we actually get to talk about that stuff because it is cool it's fun to go back and look at like okay who had the best undefeated stage or who had the best record was their schedule as as uh better or worse than this team and their record um it's nice to be able to do that with esports and 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 have those discussions and get into it because that's what we do. That's fun. At least I think so. I don't know. Enough on that. Last, <laughs> last but not least, uh, rumor is from Slasher, now writing for ESPN again, uh, 2019 Overwatch League finals to be held in Philly this year. So. Yeah. Pretty cool. I'll probably be there. Oh, yeah? Probably. That's right. You're we'll not see. far from there, huh? Yeah, no, not, not too far. I think uh, I looked it up when we had the report published and... Uh, I think it's like a 200, 250 round trip. Not bad. Get a hotel. I don't know. We'll see who's going and maybe we'll, we'll create like a little, little house. We'll create, we'll build a house. We'll, we'll build a we'll house. Build a house. Yes. Rugged, rugged esports viewers will log cabin. Instead of Habitat for Humanity, and... it'll be Habitat for Overwatch. Habitat journalists. for nerds. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. So that's cool. Uh, I mean, no real like big thoughts on that, right? Maybe when are, when just... are we getting you in the country, Iska? When are we doing like a live tactical crutch? When is that happening? 
Don't know. Whatever the president decides to let you in. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why, when when a good occasion is. We'll see. Okay. You could also visit here, of course. For Atlantic Showdown. Yeah. Maybe next year. We'll see. I, I would <laughs> like to go to Germany at some point, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah. So that's going on. That's cool. Still rumored, though, not confirmed, but... No, no confirmations. Yeah. Eh, all right. Let's talk about last week's games. There's some interesting results here. Uh, Gladiators, of course, you know, we were talking last week about um, the Gladiators also fixing for a 7-0 and stage. Like, we were very close to getting three yeah. teams, even four teams, in uh, the perfect stage, right? And so, like, again, that's a whole different conversation, isn't it? But I got to remember who, where is my London? Well, I can't remember who London lost to. London was lost it? to Chengdu. Oh, yeah, that's right. 3-1. Good old and London fashion. In the Dallas Fuel homestand, Yiska's favorite live Overwatch event. Uh, yeah, so... Gladiators, we almost had three teams that went seven and zero. Almost had four teams. We had honestly, we had four mm. teams that should have gone. 7 Which is nice because we've been, you know, it's been what last season it was like the one which was NYXL, and then you had like some stragglers kind of falling a grade below that could compete at times, and at other times NYXL just looked dominant. And in stage one of season two, we had like the big two that we wanted to see fight. I mean, I guess you could say big three. NYXL definitely was not as, as slumpy as they are now. Now we have a good handful, but like a clear delineation between the Shock and the Titans and, and you know, the contenders, you know, people knocking on the gates. Um, but it's nice to see that people are knocking on the gates. It's nice to see that there is some churning. There is some, there is a little bit of a, you know, there there's some shake ups, you know, we're not just seeing NYXL just completely rest on their laurels and just be completely head and shoulders above the rest of the teams. Like we're seeing people take it to the NYXL and, and beat them, which is I enjoy that. I enjoy I don't enjoy heavy parody because I, then I don't get a lot of like fun stories and like, you know, there there's some dominance being built up. But to see, you know, a team being torn down a little bit and have to face some adversity. It's nice. I I, I like it. I mean, so, Iska, did you get to watch the the Uprising Gladiators game? Mm, yeah, half of it, I think. And so, then... like, what were you seeing there? I mean, they they won pretty handily, three to one. Like, how how does a Boston Uprising team who like barely squeaks by? Uh, let me just double check and make sure. I never want to get my Boston games wrong because. People freak out. Well, they it. will. They will eat you alive. They will. Yeah, they'll freak out. Barely squeak. So Boston loses to Washington Justice a couple days later after going three yeah. to one against um against Gladiators. Like, how how do you <clears throat> how does how does that happen? Is it like a preparation thing? I think so. I think they prep really hard for uh, LA and. Um, uh, like, uh, again, I only got to see, I think, the first two maps and then start of the third. I think I went to bed, if I'm not mistaken. And even those maps, I'm already delirious. So I wouldn't. Yeah, be able I'm trying to, to remember them. Uh, give you a very structured analysis of the point. But it did feel like um, it was possible. The, the thing is, okay, in my mind, it was the case that. Gladiators had sort of reached that escape velocity of where goofy stuff affects you in the way, for instance, where Shock and Vancouver are largely immune, other than, of course, Houston, um, to uh, all sorts of strategies. And also, that is also why GOATS makes it so um, consistent, I guess, that you can then also just out goats uh, in goats mirrors. So I was very surprised to see that. I thought it, it was a done deal that they would be going for a perfect stage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I any of us. So yeah, I don't think any of us assumed otherwise. But 
You also had the thing for DC as well, where uh, it, it was Kate's last game. I guess people really wanted to bring bring a W home, ended on a W before. Yeah, uh, there. I mean, not to transition into talking about the Justice, but they started really typical, pretty weak, not doing much of anything, and then ended on a decent no. Like I wasn't, I didn't hate it. There, there were bits that I hated. That I, there were bits that I really didn't like. Um, but overall, showed a little bit of a, a clean side to them. I, I thought that was uh, nice to see. Uh, I don't think having uh, clear bad teams is, is a great thing for the league either. I think having just the the bye weeks, you know, your your Floridas, your Houston's, your 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 Washingtons um, aren't good. It's not good for anybody. It's not good for shop. It's not good for the the environment. You know, having having them improve is is a good thing. And it's nice to see. The funny thing is we'll never have a discussion about the imperfect, imperfect stage because Shanghai yeah. Dragons did it for an entire season. <laughs> I mean, in the same way, it is. Imp- it's very impressive that y- you were allowed to do that. I, I was too. I was almost to a point that I was like, OK, Blizzard, you might want to look into this because this is not good. Uh, apparently the fans rallied around it and made it better than what I was uh, expecting. Um, and that's a whole nother discussion for another day, but thank God for those fans, because I think if, um, things like were a little bit worse, that's, that's almost that's too not much an underdog, underdog though. That's like an under, that's girl. like something's wrong here. Like there's something yeah. going on that's not right. And maybe there's some foul play afoot again, speculation on my behalf, but I think it's pretty egregious to go zero in 40, like something wrong there. <laughs> They they never had that figured out though all season one. I mean, from the beginning where they're losing coaches <laughs> and to, uh, just stupid stuff, man. We're gonna reminisce on that someday. It's gonna be a really great flashback. That article. was painful, man. Um, the the best part of all of this is like I thought. Okay, how bad could like Shanghai probably had a better relative stages or um, like. My idea was that Houston had the worst stage of all time. They actually didn't. Stage two, Shanghai only won two maps, yeah. <laughs> but they had they played forty. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's insane. That's a lot. Oh man, I've, I I already bad. forgot how how absolutely terrible they were. <laughs> that was like you might as well ignore this because it will not matter. Yeah, yeah. you just get it's like a little buy and a break for your team. Yeah, you know. it is. Gives you an extra one, one to get to literally it. was a free one. Yeah. Uh, so another another match that was really interesting is Atlanta Rain defeat kind of a struggling NYXL Joe. Yeah, this is uh, very interesting when we go into the playoffs, uh, seeing how NYXL drew a a, a fairly strong Gladiators um, playoff. Overwatch is very different from regular overwatch when we um this kind of sparks up the old houston play and dps debate you know do you play the team or do you play the league um i think in playoffs it's very different it's very obvious you just play the team in front of you what do i do to beat this team if it is playing dps you play dps see you not agree no what i mean is you don't play the at least if you're in like sell it never felt to me like they're playing the team in front of them they're like like maybe if we be chuck and round two then we should go all in on them and completely ignore so foro <laughs> i think as much as they do seem like they they are very uh game th- they're, they're applying a lot of game theory to their practice and like what's the most optimal here there you know where can we you know cut corners um I, I do think that they're they're struggling. I, I think that they're trying to prepare for as many games as they can because people are taking it to them um, behind the scenes. I think that they're very much this team that looks at an ideal and chases that one particular ideal, that style, and they're not good at adapting. They don't play well outside of their comfort. And you see that. Yes, I agree that Jonak's biggest weakness historically has been his ultimate usage. And that was put on display. 
was that a sign of tilt? I, I'm willing to say, yeah, probably. Uh, you you don't see a, a a top level Zen make those kinds of mistakes. You know, going you know uh, popping trans when you're down three, like that's that's kind of rookie amateur hour stuff. Um, and and seeing that pressure put on NYXL makes me think that they're trying a lot harder than what we assume because it does feel like a, a London kind of soul scenario where th- it, it just is kind of it, un, it, it's hard to uh, apply reason to why they just lose. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it, it is just that they're just not on. They're just the stylistically they're not there. And, and mm-hmm. I think NYXL has a very obvious color. They want to play that, that turtle very slow, very methodical, clear every single possible, you know, scenario. And, and that gets in their way. And I think they are getting in their own way. Um, and that style isn't uh, working. And, and there's some uh, maybe there's some reasons for that. Or maybe there's okay. a, a patch. I don't know. Let me take a shot. So my friends from uh, Defiant put me on a um, on a track there that um, so NYXL looked sort of like a very good dominant team, and then ATL comes in and somehow manages to beat them two in two matches. Now, how is that? What Defiant said was the defensive play style of GOATS has mm. been massively nerfed by the Lucio speed boost changes. So what it does, okay, in my mind, I was like, okay, wh- how, what's the mechanism behind this? I don't understand, because if someone plays aggressively into you, so they speed boost and you're re- late to react, you would think that by having slower speed boost, they would be, like, Not they would have... Le- less or mo- now mo- now more time to react sure that is not the case though what it actually is happening is very aggressive teams just run on them and because the the way the speed boosts works out on most maps is that you can't out rotate teams anymore and take favorable fights because of the lucio speed boost as a reactive thing and it being very much harder to defensively move than uh, to aggressively move that is in my in my mind, if I go like into my e- esports history bag, if you think about what mastery of metas looks like, most of the time, if a meta has been around for a very long time, the defensive players start getting the Ws and become dominant. Mm. Because once you figured out all the aggression timings and everything like that, you'll know it all. Then you can just judo move them and just win that way. And yep. that's the so that seems to be the ide- ideology once again to play like this eventually perfect style for NYXL when they should be making the aggressive style. They should be making that them like uh, the aggressive moves that puts honestly not good teams like Atlanta yeah. on the back foot where they make worse uh, decisions. And also to a degree, you cannot prepare for Baby B. The stuff he does is unreal. Like I like I like that you constantly call him a space cadet. <laughs> it's it's un- dude. You know this <laughs> saying that the the best swordsman doesn't have to fear the second yes, best yes. swordsman in the world. He like baby the base just never wielded a sword. B- baby base just like the swordsman that goes like I- I'll just throw this sword and then that's his graph by the way. It's just like okay, I just left Hanamura spawn. Let's graph and hope the opponent either can't react. Like, it, the entire time, it's unreal. You can't prep for, for like, that amount of randomness. I, I'm convinced he throws coins to the side when he does it. Like, <laughs> he just constantly has a pair of dice that he rolls on stage. Like, oh, six means I, I bubble my Lucio. Like, how do you... Yes. Yeah, in, in a way that it's very difficult to prepare for that. But there, that is a, a weakness, I think, in in t- in a style. Like, if you can't... I, I read an article um, penned for the FGC, so the fighting game community, talking about how it, it's almost... There shouldn't be a stigma around practicing against players that are very much yes. below your skill level because it, it hones and, and it practice you can practice very strict fundamentals on how to just beat someone how do i just beat somebody mm. how do i just impose my will how do, it's very uh easy to then train um different styles against that person because you still probably will beat them but you're bringing yourself down to that kind of uh echelon that level and 
you can give them a good game as much as they're giving you a good game but there there is an art to just beating somebody that's below you and if you can't do that well okay then we have a problem here why can't we like th that is a weakness so I, is nyxl within the top three right now i'd say no that was so that was actually going to be my question is like do you feel you know in stage Brainwaves. one you could definitely like still be like you know yes, what like yes. nyxl feels kind of like weak and teetery like i don't know if i would put them as certain certainly not the best but you know second still is it still put them in second is shock you know actually yeah gonna be it's better shock the real deal like i don't yeah. know you know but right now it very much looks like you know nyxl like do i, I, I put third. them i put them down you know by at least for this stage with la and london um i, I like yeah like I do think that there's a world if if they can lose to Atlanta, I don't see why LA or London couldn't also be NYXL outside of the. I, I think it's one of those like perennial like boxing things where it's a it, the styles make the fight, and now we're getting to that level of Overwatch where just because Atlanta plays this super aggressive style doesn't mean that Gladiators play that style. Gladiators might play a different style and that matches up poorly, a, l a little bit more poorly, I would say. Um, so. I, I definitely know where you're going, and I, I I'm generally agree, but I don't know if I'm willing to go transitive mode here. Okay. Of course not, Joe. Why would you? Right? <laughs> why Why would you pick a side when you can just you know? I, I'm picking a side. I'm not. I'm saying NYXL is the gatekeeper. I'm saying you know Shock and Titans are fighting in the the gladiatorial arena for who's the best, and NYXL are sat outside collecting ticket books. So you put shock and um, oh my god, uh, Titans. Titans. Yes, clear one S and tier. two, one A, one B, and YXL A, A tier, and then everybody else B. Interesting. Yeah. What do you think, Yiska? Do you put do you put NYXL in a tier of their own, or do you put them up or down? No, they're not in a tier of their own. I no? think they're who's with no. them. Gladiators. I would I would have loved to say Seoul, but they're just uh, they London. Did Seoul should throw. be. <laughs> it's just they can't yeah. they can't do it. They can't yeah, live up to expectations. They're now there with London, and um, unless they can reinvent their style, and because what also like their stage doesn't look that dire, but as soon as they keep like Atlanta is not the best aggressive goats team. This stuff will be yeah. way worse if they meet the guys that actually know how to play uh, offensive goals more effectively, right? But that's that's where I'm. I, I struggle to create that fluid kind of stage there, and and like uh, you know the A bracket, where I look at NYXL and I'm like, okay, for the most part you're going to give me this much value. Everybody else, it, it there's waves, there's peaks in these valleys that you, you almost can't account for. Like, should should London be losing to Chengdu? Not really. Should Seoul be losing a Spark? No. Should I be putting Spark in that same tier? I don't know. I, no. I, it's hard for me to figure out that team because we still have people, you know, comment, not commandeering, but, but commenting on how good they are behind the scenes and how terrible they are on stage. And I'm just like, what are you seeing that I'm not? Because it, to tell me that they play the, like some of the most clean goats as, as baby did uh, on oversight last night, it's kind of surprising because they play the almost the, the sloppiest they get by, but it's almost on hero plays and these, these mechanical powerhouses they have on their team. And um, it, it's surprising to hear that they're doing as good as they are behind the scenes because we haven't seen even a, a glimpse of it yet we've seen some hero plays yes 100 percent. but where's the where's where's the defined clear like macro style that that shock provides that they're just clean i'm gonna 4-0 you no problems asked is it a stage thing it could be but man sparks weird spark is weird if you watched last week if you remember i had spark beaten dynasty you did I you did, did. called it one Things did not go as we show. expected. <laughs> One for I think four the, on the only show. thing we all got right was Dallas. I, you got Spark right as well. Yep, I got Spark right, and then um, Yiska I said got Chengdu. Shanghai. I said Chengdu as well. Yeah. Yiska said Shanghai. I think I got one. So. Yeah. yeah. It's all right. You, uh, 
you still do pretty pretty all right for yourself. Um, any, any thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> any any? Let's find something redeeming about Jokestick. Mm. You do ve you ver do, very you, well you, for you yourself. You do good yeah. stuff sometimes, in, maybe. In br breathing air and like... I am an expert existing. at breathing air, man. <laughs> Woo! You like, asked me to compete in some air breathing? Woo! Let me tell you. I like your hat. I am an expert in wearing hats as well. Plaid, also a connoisseur. Well... I'm, I'm actually upset that we've... <laughs> Like we've, how many episodes have we done so far? This is thirty-one. Oh, I think we've never seen in all thirty-one episodes we've never seen a cat shirt, and ups, an, uh, upset by it. We're all faded. I I actually need to like buy new clothes. I haven't bought new clothes in years, so like half the shit like doesn't fit or it's faded and it just looks bad. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to buy a new one. This intermission brought to you by cat shirts. Yeah. All right. Well, that's enough of that. <laughs> um, let's let's not. Let, anything you guys want to talk about next? for Spark Dynasty? I didn't catch the game. Um, pretty surprised by the result. I'll, I'm gonna have to rewatch it. Um, to get kind of caught up. I've cool. been kind of head in the sand. So, um, yeah, surprising, but yeah, not sure. Let's talk. Well, let's talk about the playoff schedule then. So, playoff schedule for Overwatch League has been announced uh, for Stage Two. What time are we? It at? is a doozy. And yeah, it's it's a good one, man. I uh, I like it. I like this. My my question. I have one question on the sheet, and it says, "Is this the best playoff bracket that we've seen in Overwatch League?" And I don't know how I could say no. Like all all the teams that I think I would want on there are on there. I kind of would have liked to see Chengdu a little bit, but I would have liked to see Seoul instead of Spark. If I'm being yeah, honest. that's yeah. true too. But you know, you've got really good teams there. They're not <laughs> they're not likely to end up well. So here's here's the weird thing, right? So how does this work? So we've got San Francisco Shock versus Shanghai, which is going to be shock we would have to assume right mm -hmm. yeah um you'd have to assume titans over fuel yeah Ooh, hot take just kidding <laughs> that's obvious <laughs> F you all right <laughs> and then uh gladiators nyxl that this one's interesting that's uh that is a toss-up that does not feel i don't feel any particular way you have to pick a team i'm making you pick a team and you wait, can't wait. even justify. I mean, we're it. doing this later, so. Oh yeah, that's right. We're doing this. Uh... Oh, never mind. Yeah, we can't do this. So never mind. <laughs> Thank you. Totally forgot. So, all right. Sparks London, same same way. Like that's still like London should win though, right? Easily the favorites, but I'm not. I still got. I have reservations. So, it, it, it would did hurt my soul to realize that this is. The first stage playoffs for London since stage two. Yeah. <laughs> that's, dude, that doesn't compute. It's yeah, that's not weird at all. all. Yeah. So. Do you go London here? I believe in London. Yeah. I, I can't believe in London. Um, I can't really believe in Spark either. It's, it's literally a lesser of two evils. Um, Maybe Spark can do it. I, I'm I'm willing to give Spark the benefit of the doubt. I th I think they could pull off something something. They're crazy not here. playing Soul here. They're playing London. Yeah, London throws though. Do they in playoffs? <laughs> yeah, they do. See, I don't I'm think getting here. I'm getting mad at myself that I consider this a terrible take by Joe, and then in the end, I'm just like disappointed again because I completely overvalued london once again like it's mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, it really shouldn't be in my mind but it's i'm just like dude come on it's london man of course they're going to take it but no of course it's london and it isn't that it's obvious. yeah it's not a clear choice um i i think there is room to say that like spark hasn't been on stage if they have nerve issues putting them 
on a stage that means a little bit more does that affect them negatively have they overcome that overall have they been improving behind the scenes it sounds like they've just been completely maintaining that like impressive skill level but just hasn't translated over are we seeing them finally translate some of that over possibly um but there's just something about london that every time i think they're gonna win they just lose and it's (laughs) it's not explainable sometimes they just go hey chung do and I said that they would do this. I'm like, they should be able to beat them head to head. Whatever style you want to put at them, London should beat. Sure as sure as the sky is blue, London go, hey. The sky is blue. Sorry. We we see you. We see you running Orisa Hog. We're gonna run Orisa Hog too. And then they suck. Oof. And it I'm just like, all right, London. Back down you go. So just a reminder, semifinals do get reseeded again. So yes, uh, yes. highest remaining mm-hmm. seed plays lowest remaining seed and second highest plays. So here's lowest. a question. And I don't know that, that any of us are going to have the answer. Oh, wait, no. Okay. So Adla- Atlantic and Pacific are the one and two seeds, correct? Yes. So Titans, third, I believe. Yeah. So Titans even have an, Oh, uh, third seed. They would have a harder. Yeah, so that's yeah, so third Titans, seed. They'll play yeah. the highest. Titans were third seed despite going 7-0 and oh because yeah. London had the yeah. higher, or they were first in their division. They had the map uh, division. differential. No, yeah. they were first in their division. They didn't have map differential. They were first in their yeah. division, so they get... It's about divisions, yeah. Yep. Yeah, right? that's that's also my face when I found this out. Thank <laughs> you. But, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, no. Um, yep, 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 yep. Okay. Yeah. Vancouver Titans we're, we're, beat we're, we're here now. London across the board. Yes. On the standings, but they don't get the second seed because they're in the same yes. division as the Shock, who did better. Always gonna be confusing to me. So, <laughs> Which, by the maybe, way, maybe it's a sports thing that I'm just like not used to. You know, like divisional play. I don't know. Especially because it's divisional play be... is so arbitrary right now. <laughs> like it's just. Yeah, I, mean, I hope I hope that changes. No, it it does have ramifications on how often you play certain teams. It right? does, well, of course. Yeah. But like it's the, there. There could be more to that, and I think but, there will be more. Like to it that. doesn't make it more competitive. No, the the problem is that Atlantic is legitimately, unbelievably more terrible, as we already assumed it would be, than uh, than Pacific, and yeah, six I, like, of the top eight teams this stage are all yeah. Atlantic's Pacific. rough, especially if New York's slumping. Like that was the that was the obvious. Like okay, they're gonna just be the best. That's not true. Anymore. I want to go. I'm going to go find some YouTube comments of people absolutely shitting all over our takes when we're just like, yeah, the, you know, and the, the division with NYXL and London Spitfire is going to be infinitely worse yeah. than, than the ones with shock, the Titans gladiators. Yeah. Well, this and is also the people that thought the Titans weren't all caliber and thought they were going to be bottom 10. Also the team or also the people who thought that Houston plugged all their holes by signing Dante and uh, yeah, imagine you know, thinking that, come on, get out of here. I think remember maybe, that maybe if you just listen a little bit more, maybe if you, you can have those opinions, but if you listen and then look at, wow, these are completely different than what I think. Maybe I should change them. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Just going to make fun of you a little bit because we can, because <laughs> we have microphones. You actually deserve a lobotomy. <laughs> okay i think oh, uh, i think joe's wor- worked up and ready to go for uh where we're heading next which is going to be a new segment we're calling player versus player so player versus player is something that i actually <laughs> did on a previous show of mine that was on hearthstone where joe and yiska are going to go head to head in three rounds of topics where they're each going to take a side and they're going to argue their side for 60 seconds. And then at the end of it all, I'm going to post a, I'm going to post a straw poll in the chat. So chat, you guys can all vote on who you think wins. I ultimately decide the winner of the round and the, I don't know. We should have made like a Lord bet or something like that. Something. Oh God. 
something so lasting. That, i would lose that 100 <laughs> yeah. percent. something to put something on the line but you know what it's just for fun this time it's just for fun so it is that's what we're gonna do let's switch over to the topic thing boom look at that you guys are looking good ready to go so joe i'm gonna have you go first here you're muted on the worst oh, topic are. on the um, worst topic you're the one who picked them. Man. I know. I picked the topics too. I'm like, hmm, maybe if I just don't go first. So we're going to go. You're going to go first. The topic- See, I can totally just botch this too. I can, I can just, I, cause we. Look again, at Joe already peeking, hedging himself. behind the curtain. Already hedging himself. I could just win this. Jeez. Brain's, brain's actual size. You know what? F- you, you're banned. 10 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes. Hold on, I'm banning you. 10 minute timeout. Gone. Get out of here. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Actually. That, was that a gun or a whip? Or was that like some sort of a whip gun? Whip gun. You whip ah, beautiful. and shoot. Ah. So. <laughs> Smith and Wesson. Yeah. Possible right. sponsor. Joe, you ready? I'm going gonna, 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 gonna to ring the bell when you can start. I'm going to ring the bell when you're done. Do we get the topic? The topic. Number one is. Are the and I have to post this uh, straw poll really quick so that people can vote. decide. Are the Vancouver the Titans vote. the best team in the world? Go ahead, start. The Vancouver Titans are not the best team in the world. I think this will be proven this stage. I think the shock have shown that they can be the golden boys of the overwatch. They've come out. They have the deepest bench. Uh, compare the benches between them and the Titans. You have rascal. You have violet. You've got super coming into his own. I think this team's absolutely ridiculous. You put them in a different meta. They feel like they can adapt their meta agnostic. Um, Again, there is a caveat to be made. Was this the hardest schedule? No. I don't think Titans have the discipline that the Shock have shown this stage. They're they're dominant. I, I think they're going to go in, and I said this before, they're going to beat Shock in the final, or Shock is going to beat the Titans in the final. Um, this isn't going... I, I think it'll You're be done. close, but... Yeah. You're done. All right. Uh, you shouldn't post the poll before the... Hey, you shouldn't vote before you heard the argument. <laughs> <laughs> Volumel already has four votes. Dude, there's like 80 people in here right yes. now. Settle down. It's okay. Four. All right. Yiska, Joe says the Vancouver Titans are not the best team Dang. in the world. Your chance to rebut. Go. I have even less confidence in Joe's opinion than he does himself. Uh, so... Honestly, like, there's only one team that hasn't lost in the Overwatch League yet. There's also the argument of benches. What, why do benches matter currently in the GOATS meta? What, what kind of bench do you want? How often do we see Striker? How often do we see, like, these other players playing? It's the first six, and that's what matters, and that's what defines the best team in the Overwatch League. Unless you also want to mess with my boy Hurek. Oh no, I know I'm arguing against myself. But <laughs> no, that... <laughs> you also haven't even stated your, your, your position. So Vancouver is most definitely the best team in the amateur uh, hour in, in the world, simply because they have the experience what it takes to unlock that sixth gear, which we still haven't seen from Shock in playoff situations, where they get world record roll, rolled, and we there has been no precedent that they can unlock that in high pressure situations especially against top tier teams while vancouver wait let me think is unbeaten pretty much for a year now all right he's done i guess <laughs> he's done they even use his time yeah. what an amateur man he was this close, guy man. He was close. Need he's at like 50, 56 seconds oh, yeah okay okay all right i don't need the time Go i don't even need to argue this point it argues itself <laughs> It does. So he's chat, so predictable. Chat, go ahead. <laughs> he's the most predictable person. He's like, I hate movies. Movies are bad. <laughs> we were in Discord today, and he goes, I, I can't, I can't, I can't watch fighting scenes in movies. There's <laughs> yeah, just no point to that. I, There's I just like no fish point to that. I like and academic journals. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, yeah. let's see what Chad is saying right now. Right now, Yiska's ahead nine to seven. And I hate closer than I expected. I hate to say it because I want to say the shock just had a perfect stage. If they can't be the best in the world after a perfect stage, what does it take for the shock? Here we go. Here we go. This is why we had the argument earlier about stage <laughs> strength of schedule. I'm already having fucking flat now flashes here. Oh my god, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> Just all I'm saying is until the Titans have a perfect stage. Yeah. (laughs) But I actually, I do have to go with Yiska um, on this one. As much as I want, I thought I was going to hit As much as I want the Shock to be the best team in the world. And I do think that there is a world that we find out after these playoffs. Yeah. If if, if Shock do beat the Titans, do we have to revisit this? If Shock beat the Titans, Yiska. Do they become the best team in the world? Yes, because I think the margins are close enough for that to be true. Yeah. So strength the schedule aside. Yes. Okay. I mean, yeah, it'll, it, it'll be definitely proven in playoffs. Like, was this just a fluke or are you that good? Yeah. All right. So let's go on to round two. That was fun. So Yiska is up 1-0. Sorry, Joe. Should put a little score, okay. scoreboard okay. on you know. there. So you're Yiska. very good at breathing, by the way, though. Yes, wearing hats and plaid. <laughs> Yiska, Today you're going to be going first on this one. Who wins between the New York Excelsior and LA Gladiators in the playoffs for Stage 2 coming up this weekend? So I think the Gladiators will honestly uh, be able to win. The, the aforementioned strategy issues or stylistic issues that they're playing very defensive that has been true for a while, and NYXL has been unable to resolve those issues. It's apparently not as easy as just saying place, press W instead of pressing S. Apparently, it requires a lot of different aspects, and revamping themselves might A, not be attractive at this point, and also not feasible enough. So I think also, especially seeing how, yes, Gladiators had a little bit of a weak point here and there, but they certainly play a style of goods that can apl- exploit these issues and will also not see um, the the problems that they might have had against Boston. I think Gladiators themselves are a very good prep team, possibly better than NYXL. Also keep in mind, NYXL notoriously bad in playoffs. You can have these five seconds every time, my dude. I'm just like add him to Joe. Add, add no, those no, five you get you're to you're Joe. now you're done. That was a good ten seconds short okay, on that one. Job. Jeez. Give so, him. so gladiators. I don't watch your pity. Ten seconds. All right, Joe, go a ham, man. All right, chat. Now I saw your votes in the All Star game. NYXL is the easy favorites here. Am I right, guys? We've got Pine. We've got Sabe Yolby, the married man meta guys. Am I right? <laughs> Woohoo! This guy's married, for God's sakes. He can win. Am I right, guys? <laughs> That's easily enough oh. to beat the Gladiators. The Gladiators play Reaper. Come on. The Gladiators play a similar style. NYXL. They're they're the best team in the world, guys. Come on. They, they had Ark. Ark's on Washington. He's cool, right? Like, they've got the scouting. They've got the preparation. Like, this should be an easy win. This is – the Gladiators are light work. The pay I saw you in the chat, just plug yours, homie. Like, your your team's just not cutting it. Void can't even stay in Mac. What, what's up with this? Your, your contender team can't even make awesome – whatever. What is it? Showdown? What do they call it these days? What's up with that? Your franchise is a mess. I I can't like you like that. So <laughs> point for Yiska. <laughs> oh man. Oh, if like, I've if I've ever had to slash S harder, you just don't know me. Oh my god. That you was, like that? That was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, All right, chat. Man. Where are those votes? Come on, people. Pop yeah, champ. So well, you know, what are the kids calling it? So fourteen to eight in favor of Yiska right now. Dang it, man! I, I'm not hip with the kids. I don't know. I don't eleven know to the, twelve the though. Wants. So eleven to twelve on the Titans. Still really? behind. Wow. Still behind, but 
Team is that's cl- that's that is oddly closer team than I expected. Well, wow. pretty close. All right, here we go. One last round. Yiska, you got to go first again. Give Joe the advantage here <laughs> to be able to rebut. I Who- don't think there's any advantages. In that. Who are the worst team in the Overwatch League right now? Go ahead. The Florida Mayhem. Like, <laughs> I, I'm not sure how we can even argue this at, at this point. Not only have they the worst uh, match score, they don't seem competitive at all. That team is going to be ejected wholesale into outer space and ju- are just going to fly like, like a Tesla, basically, the, through outer space. That team is not going to be in that uh, way much longer. I honestly think. Just like if we're saying team, I also consider organization staff as part of it. Do they even have a head coach at this point? Nobody knows. Maybe he's also in outer space. Like th- that team is honestly, I once again, I have to say it's, it's possible that they are like if that team was to continue playing the entire, uh, entire season, it is very possible to me that even though they already have a win, that they wouldn't get another one. I also think they would. Uh, You're done. We'll when, yeah. You're done. <laughs> we get trying to cash in that extra time now. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. So, uh, Florida Mayhem. Fair enough. Wor- worthy opponent. Worthy opponent. I, 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 I too think that the Florida Mayhem are not very good. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Shocker. Hold right? on, Joe. Joe Hot made a take. statement. Joe. Joe made a statement. All right, Joe. Who's your pick for worst team in the Overwatch League right now? Well, there's a team out there that has their GM going on hour-long rants about how the casters are mean people and somehow influencing league decisions, which if it's true, then everybody should just be fired and we just just nuke this whole project. But the Houston Outlaws can't even make changes if they wanted to. They have a carousel, like Monty mentioned, of Brig and Tracer players. Their coaching staff makes these very, very odd and strange decisions. Their, their leader constantly feeds on Brigitte. Um, they, they have a Zarya player that is probably the most underwhelming Zarya specialist in the league at this current time. I, I mean, Soon's doing a better job than than this team it's 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 an absolute travesty they can't even again i can't stress this enough they can't make changes even if they wanted to they are the worst team they're only going to get continue being worse like florida mayhem per you know they're they're brass apparently they're talking to runaway and maybe they're making some some aggressive moves in the coming future cool at least they can make changes houston's gonna just continue to stagnate and be poor Simple as that. They're the worst. Yeah, but they don't have this guy making like statements on Twitter. Like, oh, I re- at least I read the rules, and Hagoshi yeah, but- is actually very good. And like- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and this machinery is still here, dude. And, and they got their their scouting done first, by the way. Just to, so you know, they they made they they had they signed their team first. They got their scouting done out of the way first, and that's important. Ah. Uh. Joe, I'm giving you this one, man. It's uh, Houston Outlaws are in trouble. It's pretty easy to see. You know, the Florida Mayhem show that they're capable of making changes. Yeah, at the they're very not least. always good changes. No, but... no. Am I going to agree with those changes? No. No. <laughs> I think but it's... there's an attempt. Okay. Uh, but it, instead it... of instead of filming Omen by HP commercials, maybe we should just be focusing on getting better at the game, huh? Maybe we should play a little bit more DPS. Am I right, chat? Huh? Give me some votes. Pine, married, mad meta. Come on. I'm trying to pander here. Come on. Bring, dude, him in. You're, Bring it in. Dude, folks. you're ahead by six votes, man. Like, you, oh, you, you, it's, a, it's a steal, you boys. You've won the, you've won it. Uh, but Yiska does win two to one. So it's uh, okay. I'll take my win. I'm not yeah. goose egging. That's fine. Congrats, Yiska. But on, on your first forget. player versus player win, by the way. Big deal. Let's not forget on the last question, we all lose. That's collectively true. we all lose. as a community we lose we all just uh, poop it back and forth forever it's yeah it's uh neither neither of those orgs seem to be doing too high another one of those you know shanghai at level orgs and i'm just like man maybe blizzard needs to step in here maybe they shouldn't be dictating things behind the scenes maybe they just need to go to the franchise and go what's up what's going on here 
because this ain't good. Having this many poor teams, again, Washington, you're not too far above them. You're getting better. Just marginally, you're getting better. You're not you're not Waterloo mm-hmm. level yet. Or what? Well, what is it? Uh, Carlton these days? What's the the marker? Yeah. What's the what's the bench mob line? I, I think the thing is, what I can also not be mad at is their recent pickups. They are clearly mm-hmm. upgrades. Mm-hmm. Yep. So not solving yeah. the main problem, but making improvements. Um, you can't say the, the same for the other two teams. So yeah, definitely where I thought Washington would be. Which is good. Good, good, good. Well, there you have it. That's our first ever. Was it a success? Uh, I think so. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun to just kind of switch it up a little bit. It's a little bit slower. You know, we you can't talk too much about like the couple of matches that are going to be coming up. We do, it looks like, are going to be having a special uh, bonus episode this week. I think it's if possible, everything, if possible. everything keeps going to plan, we may have uh, an awesome guest for you. Stay tuned. Uh, before the end of the stage. So definitely stay tuned for that one because that's going to be a good one. But other than that, fun show. Just a nice, fun, chill mm-hmm. show. And yeah, I don't know. I don't really have anything else to say except uh, let's get out of here. Joe, before we get out of here, though, um, I don't know, plug your stuff. Where can people find you throughout the week and everything else? Anything else coming um... out this week? I'll probably do some sort of like uh, playoff preview, like stage review once I watch some VODs. Uh, so check out the YouTube at Falmel on, on Twitter, YouTube. Uh, don't have an Instagram. Don't take that many pictures. You see enough of my ugly face here. Um, no, I have a very no, special piece, uh, a very special article, very long um, in the works. It's near completion, just uh, getting some artwork done. Um, and, and that should be coming in the next uh, couple weeks or so. So stay nice. tuned. Awesome. Yiska, what about you? Where can people find you? And what do you have coming up this week? So finding, actually, I, I, w- I was very happy how the viewing parties were received. We got some contenders, co- contenders coaches in there. We even got some Overwatch League coaches in there. Like if people want to hang out uh, during the... The matches i won't be able to watch all of them because most of the time especially thursday and friday i have to work in the morning so i unfortunately can't watch the last two or three matches but um yeah there definitely can find me in terms of um content i'm working on a special type of power ranking that has been dear to my heart is l- sadly pretty high upkeep and um we'll see Ooh, it's coming interesting what about you, Kicked? What are you, have you gone on? Uh, still not, playing WoW? Yeah, still playing WoW, having fun, man. <laughs> it's, it's just a good time. It makes it easier to watch Overwatch League games and play a game at the same time. You know, it's it's really tough totally. to like watch 30 hours of Overwatch each week. That it is. And feel like, yeah, but I want to play games too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you kind of get the fix for both there. You can find me everywhere at Kicked Tripod. Starting to play some more Overwatch I'm sorry. I think you made that joke last week. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, probably. It's fun. I'm unoriginal. It's, uh, yeah, it's been fun, though. I don't know. It was, did I tell you somebody recognized my voice? and like, y- do you do tactical crap? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty cool. It's always a nice, it's yeah, always cool. a nice thing. So, yeah. All right. Well, other than that, let's go ahead and uh, get out of here uh follow joe at volumel yiska at yiska out myself at kick tripod and make sure to find the show everywhere tactical underscore crouch on twitter and then just uh search for tactical crouch anywhere else youtube twitch vods um any rss app reader thing itunes google podcast it's all there Thanks for hanging out, guys, for episode 31. We'll be back right after the music. Do a little post show, hang out with you guys. And, um, yeah, should be a good one. All right. See you guys uh, hopefully in a couple days. Otherwise, for sure, next week, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific time, twitch.tv slash kicktripod. Bye-bye.